Yeah, yeah. Okay. That what we did many years ago, or what we are currently doing, is it's what is affecting your health. Okay. And that's where when you're sick, mm. you're told to drink water, exercise, take vegetables, yeah. fruits, and take the ones that are healthy. Yeah. You know, you're giving yourself vitamin C. Yeah. You're giving yourself vitamin B. You're drinking water. You're just staying healthy in a simple way. Yeah without complicating your lifestyle. Okay. But Rosina, the, the fundamental question here then is how do you know you're buying organic food? I mean, in fact, we tend to go for the best spinach in the market, mm -hmm. which Dr. Mudavi is saying that all that glitters is not gold. But how do you know this is organic food? Yeah, thank you, Trevor, for that question. Indeed, uh, consumers actually have a right yeah. to know what they are buying and to know whether they are buying it very safe. And in line with this year's theme that uh, know what you're buying and know what whether you're buying something which is safe. And uh, there are so many mechanisms. Actually, I will talk about what we call organic certification of the products that are in the market yeah. so that consumers are aware that there are these certification processes that have been put uh, in, the, in the various... Uh, systems to ensure that consumers are actually aware and they have been ensured that the standards have been met. Eh? Yeah. And in East Africa, we have what we are calling East Africa Organic Products Standards. Eh? These are standards which have been actually endorsed through the East Africa community and the various national governments to ensure that the, uh, whatever products are in the markets and are actually certified organic, they have passed certain standards of organic and there is a mark called Climo High Organic. Yeah. So for consumers, when you go to the market and you're buying uh, products in the supermarkets. Be very keen to read the labels that are put there. Any product that is labeled Kilimo High, it means it has passed the minimum standards of the East Africa Organic Product Standards. Eh? And internationally, there are also some standards that are also there. For example, for you, for U.S. markets, there are USDA organic products which are well labeled in the market. So, for as a consumer, let us not just pick items in the shelves, but we have to be able to read the marks and also be aware and let us also not be ignorant eh? yeah. so that we are able to pick the products that are well labeled, products that are also certified and um, there are also other mechanisms that are coming up because we want also to support the farmer who is not able, probably has not been able to get to this level of standardization and certification. Yeah. Farmers have been able to organize themselves like... Um, in Kenya and even other parts of the country, we have what we are calling participatory guarantee systems, whereby farmers, they have been able to come together as groups yeah. and they are practicing organic because they believe in it. It's right for the environment, it's yeah. right for the health, and they are able to set their own rules and practices. And this is a globally recognized uh, certification process of the farmers yeah. at that particular level because the farmers themselves, they are there and yeah. they know what is happening even to their neighbor. The other thing I want to talk about about is also in terms of international markets, yeah. there is what we call international internal system uh, control systems. These are ICS processes whereby different companies are also engaging because organic products have a lot of potential. They are, they are catching a lot of niche markets yeah. and therefore different international markets are, are coming up or are following up certain st set standards yeah. whereby a third, but a third party comes on board, they are able to examine the products whether they have been grown organically. They are even going through lab tests to be able to ensure that these products don't have pesticide residues yeah. because most consumers, as uh, our nutritionists uh, nutrition have said, eh, yeah. they are aware and they know that we are what you eat. Yeah. So these standards are there and it's for the consumer yeah. to actually be cautious, to be actually be careful as you choose products out yeah. there in the market and let us make the right informed choice choices and also support the whole value chain so yeah. that we are able to have the right quantities and the right products in the market. Okay. Dr. Neymar, talk to me about the farmers now. Do they have the capacity for ag organic agricultural practices? Yes, Trevor. I would say that the farmers in Kenya have the capacity to practice organic agriculture yeah. because organic agriculture is not difficult. Organic agriculture, we use, in organic agriculture, we use the locally available resources. And uh, farmers with enough knowledge have the capacity to practice organic agriculture. Yeah. However, the, in terms of uh, uh, application, 
there are, there are still gaps in terms of uh, poverty, yeah. which he does them to uh, recognize whether food is organic or non-organic. A farmer asks himself, do I want to eat to fill the stomach or to look after my health? Yeah. So it's either way, you look after your health or you look after, after uh, quality. Yeah. And most of them will go for the quantity because they want to fill their stomachs. But uh, I would tell you that uh, a lot of information is being generated by different organizations. We are working in a project uh, that is generating a lot of knowledge on organic agriculture. And that knowledge is being diffused into the farmer, uh, farmers through uh, a chain of, uh, of people. And I think that is going to help a lot in uh, sensitizing the farmers to understand the importance of uh, eating healthy, to understand the, the importance of uh, organic agriculture, yeah. and to understand the importance of coming together, as uh, Rosina says, mm -hmm. so that uh, their uh, products are certified as organic. So I would say that uh, uh, farmers have the capacity. However, a lot of work needs to be done in terms of uh, verification of some of the practices that uh, uh, organic agriculture advocates for. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, pest management, which uh, where we use a lot of uh, 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 botanical pesticides. Yeah. A lot of work needs to be done so that uh, the packages that we take to the farmers is the right packages. But uh, I would say that farmers are crying for this knowledge because of what Kate has said. Yeah. The, the lifestyle diseases, they have got no choice than to look for, this, for, uh, for these technologies. Mm -hmm. And yes. Collins, you know, speak to me about the policies that uh, govern this issue of food safety in Kenya. Do we have adequate policies? Because we've seen certain instances where aflatoxin levels are high in Tanzania. They're not high in Tanzania, but when they cross to Kenya, now they're high. So do we have enough policies that somehow guide food safety in this country? Thank you, Trevor. Yeah, we have policies, I think, but there are gaps. Yeah. The most of our uh, arcing policy on this is called... Uh, Codex Alimentarius. Yeah. This is in a Latin word that simply means uh, food code. And it's an internationally adopted uh, policy uh, that was formed by FAO, Food Agriculture and uh, Organization, and uh, World Health Organization, and also been uh, adopted by World Trade Organization. Yeah. And um, it sets standards in terms of food, uh, code of practices, guidelines in terms of uh, production, handling uh, of food and even trade concerning food. Yeah. So at the global level, we have that as an overarching policy for affiliated countries. There are almost 200 countries, 185 countries, and uh, the EU as a block. So member states of this treaty uh, conform to the standards that are set. Yeah. So the gap sometimes is in terms of uh, the surveillance that is done within those countries and um, the consumer absence of uh, strong consumer organizations that are also on the watch. I want to add something. There is an the aspect of also traceability. Yeah. Uh, she mentioned uh, on organic food. Uh, you can go and get it, but the aspect of traceability, where did this food come from? If you go to some of the countries in the East, you'll find some of the potatoes from Kenya and they are branded. Kabondo sweet potatoes. Yeah. So they know, and when there's a problem, they come to that part particular organization. Yeah. I know in some markets, people have complained that yet it's branded organic foods, yet uh, th th there is no certainty concerning that. So I think that is where we are. Yeah. Uh, at the global level, so that is what we have. Nationally, we also have some policies that guide this at different levels. Mm. So that is where we are as a country. Okay. Yes. Dr. Mudavi, you know you had mentioned earlier on that not all that glitters is gold. And we are wondering, right. do these farmers have this knowledge available to support the applications of the practices that you're mentioning earlier on? Because we know farmers, like with Dr. Dr. Neymar was mentioning, they just go for quantity. I mean, I want my product to look good, so I'll just put everything there all fertilizers, whether right. it's organic or not. Right. Good question, yeah. Trevor. Thank you very much. Actually, the question you have raised complements the question on the issue of capacity. Yeah. Do the farmers have the capacity to engage with practices, technologies that can support organic agriculture? And the answer is yes. But also, that is not sufficient. Yeah. You know, the farmers can have the capacity, can have the skills if they get trained on them. But also, we need other support systems in place. Yeah. In terms of doing good research 
on the technologies in the area of organic agriculture. It's very key. And this is one area that we cannot leave to the farmers alone. In terms of also looking at the inputs that we say are supposed to be environmentally friendly, and we want to uh, underscore environmentally friendly technologies, systems. If you use any inputs that go into the soil, there should be inputs that make the soil healthy for us to get that good crop. Yeah. And you see, that has to come from research institutions and also the industry to produce such. Unfortunately, today, uh, most of the inputs that are used by our farmers are inputs that are controlled by multinationals, which we all know. And as a result, there are inputs that tend to have effects on our soil systems yeah. and eventually on what we produce. Now, in terms of knowledge, yeah. information, it is increasingly becoming available. In fact, in Kenya, I want to say my organization, Biovision Africa Trust, we have a very elaborate farmer communication program working in about 13 counties. I'd like to go more. Yeah. But there is one information we provide across the whole country. The organic farmer magazine. We produce it and we supply almost across the whole country. Of yeah. course, some counties don't get this. Radio programs. We do air radio programs on what we call Kilimohai. Yeah. This is the interpretation of organic agriculture in Swahili. Yeah. But of course, it is that agriculture that we are saying it is not primitive, but it is a healthy way of producing for you today, for your children and then leaving your production system, the soil and the environment, still able to support our future generations. Yeah. So sometimes when people say that organic agriculture is primitive, I say, hey, hang on, wait a minute. In fact, that is the way to go. Yeah. Today, most of the, some of the non-communicable diseases we are talking about, obesity, mm -hmm. uh, high blood pressure for some people and others, mm -hmm. they are very much related to the diets that people eat. And the best source to yeah. give us the diets that we require for good health, it's organic agriculture. So the knowledge that is available today, we are putting it together. And that is why, for example, the German government yeah. has supported the establishment of the Knowledge Center on Organic Agriculture. Yeah. This is a huge project covering all the five regions of Africa to ensure that the knowledge in the area of organic agriculture is made available and in forms that we can actually reach the farmer. Yeah. For them to be able to understand it, see that it makes sense, makes it has value, and actually put it into application. Yeah. And that is part of what we are doing, all of us who are in the private sector, working together with the government, and I'm glad this is happening, and to ensure that we have diversity in what we produce. Trevor, let me say this. Yeah. Just a short while ago, yeah. we used to have a focus on some crops, research being done on some crops that were called orphan crops, yeah. right? Cassavas and so on. They're not yeah. orphan. Now those are the best crops that we need to have. Yeah. Cassava, sweet potatoes, yeah. bananas, yams, groundnuts. When you have a diversity of these crops, yeah. they actually contribute to a very rich diet and health of people. Okay. And the knowledge around them yeah. is really being made available. I'll maybe talk a bit later, where is the challenge? Yeah. Why is this knowledge not available? Yeah. And already some of the work that has been done on what we used to call orphaned crops, but for me now they're opportunity crops. Yeah. Because that's, that's where we want to go. We don't want to be relying on maize alone. Mm. We want to look at these very rich nutrient foods, cassava, yeah. sweet potatoes, and so on. And we see how best do we produce how best we uh, process, yeah. package, and make available for consumption. Okay. Taking into account the whole processes within the value chain, okay. beginning with the farmers as producers, and then with the other people that are supposed to be involved in the whole food value chain. Yeah. At national level, and also being part of the global food system, because mm -hmm. look at what is happening in Europe. People yeah. want to eat the healthy way. People want organic products from our countries, but we are producing less. Yeah. Today, as the situation is, organic production is very low. Yet, that is the direction we need to go. Okay. Perhaps we'll discuss more. Yeah. How do we get there yeah, yeah. to ensure that we are able to spur growth and development yes. of the organic agriculture? Yeah, Not we'll only for our economy, uh -huh. but also for the health of the people. Okay. We'll do that in just a bit. But Kate, you know, there's also the issue of how is it that you can handle food in a safe manner, you know, mm -hmm. because there's a process. And uh, to ensure that food is handled in a safe manner, what mm -hmm. should be the process that we have in place? I'm at home. What uh -huh. do I do now? Mm. You know, I, I, Ali had mentioned that you're what you eat. Yeah. So what you have on your plate determines what you're giving back to yourself yeah. for your health. But food handling and food safety is very important because it starts from the rearing or the growing of the crop. Yeah. 
also of it is the growing of the crop. If, if we are going to grow with pesticides, if we are going to use a lot of chemicals on the, in the farm, it means that the end product that gets to you, even if the residue may be minimal, but it's something that is going to affect your health with time. And this is what we are seeing right now. Yeah. Many years ago, it never happened. We never thought that oh, it was organic, it was, it was not organic. But right now, it is so clear that certain things cause cancer, carcinogenic compounds in the food yeah. that are caused because of how we grow or how we rear our animals. When you look at the animals from the source, we talk about uh, the way we like do our Kenyaji chicken, kukusama. Yeah. Mm. Sorry for <laughs> that one. But the, within, is it three weeks that yeah. it is it's ready? You know, within three weeks, the, cook, the, the chicken is ready. Yeah. And we're all there lining up to buy this chicken. Is it natural? Is this something? Is it organic? Is this something that your cell will take? Yeah. You know, we are made of nothing but cell. That cell needs the, the complete nutrient. Yeah for you to be healthy right now, for you to be breathing, for you to be representing, for you to be talking today. Yeah. So if it is half uh, short changed mm. or whatever, it means that you're not there. It, you're not getting what you need 100%. So food safety starts from the rearing yeah. and the growing of our crops. Okay. We grow them organically. And uh, the best thing in Africa, mm. in Kenya still, we still have organic farms. We are organic in nature. It's only that we all we also have our commercial lands or commercial farms, but most of farm, most of us are family farmers. Yeah. We're organic farmers, we shall go if you go to your your house, you have your own thing. So that's what we need to build because that's the future. Okay. And it's because it's not it's not exposed so much yeah. that that's what we are that that's what we need mm -hmm. in the years to come, yeah. so we, we ignore that. And also the animal rearing, it still has to be the natural source. Yeah. Because we know if we, if we eat this chicken, I did not mention what happens afterwards. High in cholesterol, you're taking too much uh, uric acid from the beef products, nyamachoma and all that, it makes you sick. And what we are looking at today is for you to live healthy, for you yeah. to be healthy for the future, not only by eating organic, by, but also by adopting a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So it's a long chain, a long journey that yeah. we all need to work together to ensure that you are getting there. And right now, uh, consumers have become, or oh, most of us have become more health conscious. Yeah. You know, we are looking for healthy food. We are looking for what to eat. But that's where it starts, from the rearing, from yeah. the farming, yeah. to the end product, what you get, what you're eating today. So when, how then do I know this is the right food to eat? Because it seems from what you're saying, almost everything has issues. Because there are some people who are telling us that you need to eat chicken or fish. So in a day, what should I be eating? You know, <laughs> that's a very tricky question because we're trying so much as the organic industry to bring organic food to your table. We have organic markets. Yeah. If you go to the supermarkets right now, you'll find organic uh, sections yeah. where you can buy organic vegetables, you can buy all that. But what I say, health is in your hands. You're the one who decides. When you wake up, you decide whether you're going to buy those other unhealthy foods or you're going to get organic food. But we are trying so much at, as a consortium, as a network, to ensure that all Kenyans yeah. are getting organic foods available. And that's why there's value addition. You yeah. find that uh, I would want my apples in a juice form, but organic. Yeah. But we don't know where to get. Okay. We are really working hard to get there. Yeah. We're already there. We all have organic markets in Karen, mm. uh, in Kambu. Maybe if I forget, they'll yeah. help me. But yeah. we have all these organic markets everywhere. Okay. We, are, we are providing or we are showing people that you can eat organic. And mm. it's labeled organic. She mentioned yeah. uh, it's labeled Kilimohai. So if you go to the shop, if it's written Kilimohai, you know that you're eating organic. Yeah. That's where you start, okay. but that's not the end. Yeah. Even if you're not eating organic, what am I doing for my health? Yeah. How am I improving it? You know, uh, what have I changed in yeah. my lifestyle for me to keep healthy or for me 
to enhance my health yeah. so that I get there. Because okay. organic eating also is not overnight. It's something that you do. Yeah. It's a process. Okay. So it's something that we are doing and we already we are here today yeah. because we are doing the same thing. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Rosina, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Why is it so hard to promote organic foods? And what we're also saying here is that we are not stopping you from eating the chicken. We're just saying get organic chicken, right? Is that what we're saying? Because many people are asking me here, then what should I eat? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, it's not hard to get organic. Actually, organic has the uh, organic. Uh, it's it's a growing industry. Yeah. I can say that, and it's not difficult. Uh, the demand is there. We have markets, as uh, as, um, as Kate is saying, we have markets in Kiambu. We have markets in Fan Zone, Karefo, We go. There are some sec sections where they have organic markets, and all these markets are available, even locally and internationally. The challenge also has been most of the. Uh, proprietors actually do this for export. Yes, we have a lot of potential here locally. So for us as uh, consumers, we are leaving everything for export or for the niche market because organic agriculture or organic products have a, a niche market. And internationally, they are recognized. If you go to some of these global trade fairs, like the Biofash uh, trade fair, which happens in Germany every year, you will see the potential that the organic agriculture sector has. And looking at Kenya, which has agriculture as the main uh, one of the mainstay of the economy, yeah. then uh, we have we, we have this opportunity as a country with the international uh, co intercontinental trade, continental free, free trade fair, yeah. free free trade area. This is an opportunity as a country to pick it up as an organic agriculture country. I've, uh, I've, uh, I'm, I'm happy because I know the Ministry of Agriculture and most of the stakeholders are aware of the benefits actually of this organic. It's not science, it's not something new. No one can uh, contest that uh, this is the future to go because the country is saying food security and uh, most of us are limited as just adequate food, sufficient food. No, it's just about safe, nutritious food. And what you are saying if it's not organic, which is food free from pesticides. Who doesn't want to take food free from pesticides. Who doesn't want to take food which has, uh, uh, which has uh, the benefits even to the ecosystem, especially now with all these global issues of climate change, yeah. with all these global issues of uh, emerging pests and diseases, emerging lifestyle diseases, emerging things all over the globe. And everyone is concerned about the globe. Everyone is concerned about the earth. And all this is an opportunity for us as a country to brand ourselves as an organic agriculture country because the farmers are there. They have tried research has shown that um, organic has the potential to feed the world. Yeah. Organic has the potential to increase the use that the farmers are looking at. So the potential is there. Mm. And uh, even looking at the statistics and the research that has also been conducted the consumers are actually willing mm. to consume organic food. And the research that has been done over the years, it has shown that uh, there is a growing trend yeah. that consumers are more aware, consumers are more willing and are more able to purchase these organic foods. So yeah. we are saying that uh, as a country, there is a big opportunity that we take organic agriculture as a, as a product of trade as a country because it will also increase the economy of this country yeah. as uh, most of, over two thirds of the agricultural products which are done for export. Yeah. If you brand them organic uh, with the niche market and with the potential that is there, then this country is going to be destined for a lot of change mm -hmm. and it will actually be uh, a, a country for reference, not only in Africa, but yeah. even in the whole globe, because okay. this is the future and even everyone's business as the themes of this year. It yeah. is everyone's business from the farmer yeah. to the consumer. Okay. It is our business. And Dr. Neymar, you know back in the village my grandmother has this way of having storing our own seeds. It's yes. like an informal seed yes. sector. Yes. How then does that contribute to the general food security? Because she will just keep her seeds and plant them like she always does and nothing yeah. changes. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you that you have mentioned about your grandmother. My mother also keeps the seeds. Yeah. And uh, life begins with the seed. Yeah. And I uh, will take you to the Bible, the book of uh, Gen Genesis 1, verse 29. God said that I will give them all seed-producing plants yeah. for them to use. And then down there, verse 31, he says that uh, all he created was good. So we are talking about life the beginning with the, with the seed. Yeah. And uh, if you look at uh, the seed industry in Kenya, it is um, controlled by Act uh, 326, a cup uh, of the Seed and Plant Varieties Act. Yeah. 
And uh, that one gives uh, a lot of descriptions of how you are supposed to treat the seeds. And it also gives a lot of restri restrictions on uh, what you should not do yeah. and what we should do. And most of the seeds uh, are under the, uh, under the, the, the multinational companies, mm -hmm. especially the seeds of uh, the, what Dr. Amudabi called the, the big three, what we eat mostly in Kenya, which is uh, wheat, which is uh, maize and rice. Those ones are controlled by the, the multinational companies. Yeah. But you'll be surprised to understand that 90%, as you say, of the seeds are controlled by the local people and uh, they use their own mechanisms to, uh, uh, to store seeds, to select the best seed, seeds to plant the next season. And uh, I find that a very good, a, a very important uh, factor yeah. in uh, production. Because one, these seeds are available. And again, we don't lose their, their vigor. We don't lose their taste. And also, they are also used to the, uh, to the local environmental conditions. Yeah. The only problem comes when uh, now there are no regulatory systems to manage those seeds. So what should we do? We should work closely with the farmers as extensionists, as government agents. Yeah. We should work closely with the farmers to make sure that they, they, they understand the process of uh, managing the seeds, yeah. rather than uh, discouraging them from using their local, their local seeds. Yeah. And that way, we are going to maintain our uh, genetic process. And, uh, uh, the, the other problem that comes when uh, now we start using what we call the, uh, the, the, the genetic use restriction uh, uh, technologies, yeah. or what we call the terminator seeds. When, uh, when, when the government introduces seeds that don't, uh, you can't plant, the second generation has been uh, sterilized, all its genetic productivity has been uh, shut. Mm -hmm. That now uh, puts the farmers completely off. Yeah. So seed production by the farmers is very, very important. Okay. And we, in organic agriculture, yeah. we encourage the concept of uh, ecology. Uh, Dr. Amodabi has talked about it, which involves diversity. Let them, let them have different types of seeds. Yeah. Let them try different varieties of crops so that uh, at least they can have choices. In case one fails, the other one uh, does well. Yeah. So it is a process that should be encouraged and the government should be able to, uh, and all the stakeholders in the agricultural industry yeah. should be able to encourage farmers to have their own seed banks. Okay. There are organizations that are really helping farmers to understand the whole issue of seed storage, yeah. seed management, and they are working closely with the farmers to make sure that they, they make their own seed banks. Okay. Yeah. Col Collins, do we it's have, do we, yeah, I'll come to you in just a bit. Let me just find from Collins. Do we have rights as citizens when it comes to safe food? Yes, we do have yeah. uh, one in our constitution of Kenya, yeah. uh, Article 43.1c, talks about every person has a right to food, and not just food, it must be adequate, it must be healthy for our dietary needs. So it is our right that is anchored in our constitution as a nation. Yeah. We also have a number of policies that have been enacted in this country. A uh, key one is the National Food and Nutritional Policy of 2011 yeah. that uh, uh, guides us in terms of production of uh, uh, foods. We have a number of them. We have uh, uh, the public health helps us in terms of handling. And there are two key areas here. Yeah. One is the food safety, which, uh, as Kate explained, talks about handling of food uh, in the process right from this, uh, the seed yeah. to uh, the processing, the factory, up to the fork. So there is that process, uh, looking at the areas of hygiene. Then the other aspect is qu uh, quality, quality of the seeds. Yeah. So this law tries to look at this, uh, this the Public Health Act. Uh, that's why they do surveillance in uh, uh, different food premises. They certify, they give uh, uh, permits for that. Yeah. And uh, we also have... Uh, and policies that guide our agricultural production. Although of late the trend is that actually they are discouraging uh, some of the use of our indigenous seeds, like uh, Dr. Nehemiah has mentioned here. Uh, the crops up of 2013, for instance, if you look at the, the, the spirit of that particular act, yeah. it is actually promoting um, uh, uh, um, these new seeds 
external seeds, yeah. as opposed to our indigenous seeds. And there is, uh, uh, most of our agricultural extension is also com promote uh, conventional agriculture as opposed to organic agriculture. And this is a challenge because when they get to my grandmother in the village and they, they discourage her that if you are still using uh, this kind of seeds, then you are not in business. You don't know what you are doing. Yeah. And uh, we've also somehow been brainwashed to believe that that is true and that knowledge is no longer being passed to new generations. So there's a very big gap. Okay. Currently, we are enacting a number of policies and we are promoting that. Yeah. Uh, climate change related policies that are helping us adapt to climate change. And uh, one of the key ways of adapting to climate change is having diversity in terms of seeds. So that uh, what we call redundancy, should this not work, this other one will work. So okay. for a particular uh, if it is a fodder for your livestock, you have a variety of seeds. Yeah. Yeah. So there is that gap in terms of enactment. Okay. As a country at the moment, we still don't have um, uh, a, a, an agricultural policy. It's a sad state, yet we pride that Kenya economy is uh, driven largely by agriculture. Yeah. And um, we don't have an organic agriculture policy. Uh, it's still in draft stage. It's been there for long, and uh, there's been a lot of delay. And uh, there are almost external forces that are actually trying to restrict us from promoting this. Yeah. And it is time that uh, we, as a people, yeah. start uh, participating um, in enactment of our laws during our public participation yeah. so that we actually uh, help our government to give us the right things that we want. Okay. I mentioned about the international uh, law, the yeah. Codex Alimentarius, which we are affiliated to. We joined that in 1969. It was founded in 1963, and we've been a member since then. Yeah. It actually stipulates standards, even of seeds that are required in terms of producing seeds that would be adequate. Yet you find when it comes to our laws, they are loose at end yeah. in this. So there are gaps that we still need to fill. Yeah. Dr. Mudavi, you want to jump in before I take a quick break? Yeah, just add a very quick one yeah. on the issue of seeds. Yes. And Trevor, this this is an extremely important area. Yeah. In fact, I would say most of our farmers have lost their sovereignty over their seed to the multinationals. I'm not against multinationals. I wish they would invest a bit more yeah. in the seed of our farmers. I remember when I was growing up, my mother could actually select the best maize yeah. to be the seed for the next cropping season. And today, everyone now looks at what is in the market. And of course, the yields have gone down drastically. Yeah. So the question of seed is very important. And I feel it is time, if possible, going county by county. Yeah. We look at what are the seed varieties that are available that we can rescue. Because if we don't do this, then we shall be losing all our genomes for, for our, our, our jump plasma, for a very good seed yeah. that can actually help us withstand some of the shocks we are going through at the moment, issues of climate change and so on. And uh, Trevor, COVID is just here with us. Yeah. And I can tell you the people who seem to be pulling through are those who are actually s eating the safe way. And the truth be told, a lot of people are now looking for where are these traditional vegetables? Mm. Why is that the case? It is because of the high nutritive value of these vegetables, which are actually grown under very much organic uh, conditions. Okay. So I just wanted to bring in this point. The issue of seed is very key. We can have other seed varieties, but also our local seed systems can be supported. Research can actually play around that, yeah. because for information as well, there is so much that even our own agricultural research, um, before that it used to be in Institute, now Calro, a lot, high yielding varieties, using our own traditional breeding methods. Yeah. But so much of that is still on our shelves, not reaching to the farmers. How do we get this to the farmers for adoption? Mm -hmm. And remember, Trevor, my point again is, when you begin with the issue of food safety, we begin with the production side. Seed is very key. So seed variety and selection becomes very paramount. Okay. We should not have farmers become uh, slaves of hybrid seed alone, which again, when you look at the returns for many, yeah. uh, they'll tell you they're not that very impressive. So it is high time we looked back at our own seed systems. Some countries are already doing this and bringing back what was already lost. 
from the little that is there and we can do further seed improvement uh, to ensure that we have a very strong seed system that can support our country. And okay. in terms of diversity as well, we yeah. have a range of crops. Because without diversity, we can't address the issue of food security as well as food nutrition and safety. Okay. I have to take a quick break on the money report. I see a lot of your questions coming through. I'll try and squeeze them in in the next 15 minutes. See you in a bit. Thank you.